Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the FPL Game Week 29 Bench Boost video for those of you that are following the 5% series. And this is another one of those videos that took me quite a long time to work out and put together because I have to allow for so many permutations. But I think we're still going to bench boost despite all the yellow flags we've got going around. But we'll look at that when we get to it first. Going to look at last week's game scores, or rather the last game week's scores from game week 28, which I know was a couple of weeks ago. Let's have a look. You would have played one of these keepers and you would have had Ward on the bench. Pope, Ramsdale, Martinez, Kepa and Ward. Ward was on the bench, as I said. They scored 2, 3, 7 and 1, so an average of 3.25. That's not particularly great. We kind of want to be getting 5 for each player, 5 points each week. Defenders, you would have had four of these. So I won't read them all out. I'll just bring them up quickly on the screen. Worrell was on the bench and Perrod started on the bench. Of the other 10, they all got very poor scores, apart from Conso, who got a six. I think Villa may have been the only team that kept a clean sheet. So your four defenders would have averaged between them 8.8. .8. That is, the four you took was an average of 8.8 .8 points. The midfielders fared slightly better. So you'd have had four of these midfielders and Gibbs White would have been on the bench and or Bailey and or Somerville. So Sun got five, Saka 18 and whether or not you had Saka pretty much decided whether or not you're a green arrow but not strictly speaking but pretty much. Uh, Trossard got five, Martinelli seven, Rodrigo six, Buendia eight. Elmron didn't play so we're going to take the first midfielder bench players as one for Gibbs White. So the average for your midfielders was 20.75. So we're happy with that. Forwards, you would have had two of these, probably. I mean, it's all averages and stuff. Solanke and Johnson would have started on the bench. Kane got six. Havertz, eight. Watkins, five. Isaac, 13. So that has an average of 12 points. Regarding the captain, one of these would have been your captain. And they... Scored 6, 18, 2, 8, 5, 2. So that was an average of 6.83 for your captain. So the global average for the whole game was 33 points. Very low. That's because some teams weren't playing. Minimum of 24. If you were following this system, and I've not checked the team was legal, but the worst you could have got was 24. The average was 51.6. The maximum was 98. I checked the teams that I'm aware are following this system, and they all got... I think they all got well above the average. Maybe one was slightly below, but they certainly did quite well. Now, was Saka essential? He got 18, which is way more than anyone else. There he is. And some people captained him for 36. So if you had Saka, you almost certainly got a green arrow. If you didn't have Saka, you almost certainly got a red arrow. And if you captained him, you definitely got a green arrow. However... I just want to show you this team by Sarah Jane, Celebrating Victory. I know I show this team quite a lot, but it's because I know she's been following this from the start. And her team didn't have Saka, but she did have Havertz for eight, Buendia for eight, Martinez seven, Martinelli seven, Kane got six, was captain 12, Watkins five, Son five. So without Saka, Sarah Jane still managed to get 61 points and a very healthy green arrow. So... Um, Saka wasn't essential, obviously it would have been nice to have him, but we didn't know. And that was Saka's best ever FPL score. Crystal Palace were in an awful place at the weekend when they played this on the Sunday. So it was a bit um, possibly predictable, but it was also, I kind of think, a bit fortunate for Saka owners. So well done if you did get Saka. 601 subscribers, thank you very much indeed. If you like this stuff, please do subscribe, likes, comments, all very good. We'd like to bench boost this week, game week 29, but as predicted, there's quite a few players that are flagged as mm, might not play, need a letter from my mum, can I miss PE, can I not go on the international break? But this always happens at international breaks, and I think Liverpool players seem to do it quite a lot, so we don't know how true some of these are. So looking at the middle of my team, Rashford is marked as yellow, Haaland's flagged, Darwin's flagged, Johnson's flagged, Botman's flagged. So I've got five flagged players. So I have looked at, should I do a bench boost a different week? Can I get more points then? 
But the good thing about using the Bench Boost chip is once you've used it, you can afford to have three very cheap players and a cheap keeper and concentrate the rest of your money on your main 11 players. So if none of these players go from yellow to orange, i.e. 50% or worse, then I'm almost certainly still going to bench boost. And I've looked at what's available for this system and I still think you should almost certainly bench boost unless we get news between now and kickoff. I think you should still bench boost for this game week, but we'll look at potential transfers and what's going on. And I just want to look at Sarah Jane's team as well. So she's got, and this is her team from two weeks ago, so of course it may change. So these points are two weeks old. But in her current team, she's got Rashford who's flagged, Darwin who's flagged, Harland who's flagged, Ward who is almost certainly not playing, James who's flagged and Johnson who's flagged. So there's always a danger. You bench boost, which means your bench plays. So you've got 15 players, but then you might have five players that don't even play. So you end up with only 10 players. So the bench boost is wasted. So there is a gamble there. So if you're really risk averse, you may want to avoid the bench boost. But like I said, in a way, it's good to get the bench boost out of the way. So maybe don't bench boost this week if you need to make more than three transfers to have 15 players you're happy with. But like I said, I've got Harlan flag, happy with him. I've got Darwin flag, probably happy with him. Rashford flag, it's like, it's not a big deal because it was an international break. And the deadline's actually Saturday morning. So I know some of you, because you're busy, you need to do this before Saturday and that's fine. What I would say is if a player's yellow, just assume they're going to play. If they're flagged as uh, 75%. So probably going to be all right. It is a gamble, but we'll see what happens. So in game week 32, we're on 29. So it's a few game weeks away. There are four teams we now know are blanking because of the FA Cup semi-finals. This is Brighton, Chelsea, Man City and Man United. So as of this game week, try to have no more than seven players from these four teams in total. There's an asterisk by the seven. Because if you've got a keeper from one of these and it'd be Chelsea or Man United, that's fine as long as you've not got a keeper from both of these. So including a Chelsea or Man United keeper, you could have eight. The reason for seven, my team's got seven, but I've got game week 29, 30, 31, 32. That's four transfers. I can get the seven down to three. I can potentially still get 11 players out for game week 32. And I've worked out my likely moves if there's no injuries or suspensions and I kind of know what I'm going to do probably but this is all guidelines you just do whatever you want so these are the goalkeepers available in the system at the moment uh, we've got Man United, Brentford, Arsenal, Newcastle, Chelsea and Leicester Pope for Newcastle is flagged 75% chance of playing I would assume he's going to play Ward is looks like he's dropped we don't know if he's going to be dropped for one game, two games, maybe the whole season. But he's looking a bit dodgy. So if you've got Ward and you've still got your bench boost and you're using it this week, definitely get rid of Ward. However, you need to be aware that De Gea's blanking in game week 32 and Kepa's blanking in game week 32. So when you replace Ward, you don't want to end up having both De Gea and Kepa. But any other combination of the others is okay. So for game week 29 transfer, if you're bench boosting and you have Ward, as much as we don't like transferring out bench, uh, keepers, get rid of Ward because you want to have two playing keepers. De Gea is a very good option. As long as you're aware, he's blanking in game week 32. So if you have Kepa, don't buy De Gea. You could get Raya. He's 4.8. Both of these keepers, you need a bit more money to get. But Ray is not great after this week, but he's OK. And of the keepers we've got in the system, he's all right. Another option is Meslier, 4.5. We're introducing him from Leeds. He's away to Arsenal this week, which is difficult. But then he has got a home game where he's got a reasonable chance of getting a clean sheet. And then he's cheap and he can sit on your bench and he does play in game week 32. You can, of course, choose one of the other keepers already in the system, which would be Pope or Ramsdale. Both of those are OK. Pope does have a double game week this week and he plays in game week 32 and he will have another double so Pope is okay but these are the suggestions I'm putting up potentially for Ward. 
of your defenders so uh, you will have two or three of these defenders Chilwell blanks in game week 32 I'm showing you this in case you want to make other transfers for fun or you're bored of some of your players just be aware that Chilwell blanks James is 75% fit and he blanks in game week 32 what I'd say of James and the injury of all the flagged players he's the one I'd be least surprised if he actually misses the game I don't have James but if I did I might be tempted to move him out. But the trouble is, if he does play both games, he could get a very good score. So again, it's all part of this gamble thing. How much are you willing to gamble? If I had lots of players not playing in game week 32 and I knew I had to make lots of transfers, I may keep him. But if I only had maybe three or four players not playing in game week 32, then I might be more inclined to transfer him out because I could afford to. If you do transfer him out, Definitely be careful who you bring in regarding the game week 32 blank. Sure blanks in game week 32 as well. But I'm not suggesting you get rid of any of these. But if you really want to offload James and swap him for a different defender, you could. For the cheaper set of defenders, you've got two or three of these. I won't read them all out. You hopefully know who they are. But be aware that Estupian blanks in game week 32. He's fit and fine at the moment, but he has just flown back from the Southern Hemisphere. He may miss some of the first game of the double but he may not we don't know he's in my team I intend to keep him for this week at least anyway Botman's marked as 75% fit but I'm going to assume he is fit really Fafana's marked as not fit and he blanks in game week 32 Worrell didn't play last game week I'm nervous about holding Worrell so I think it's worth offloading Worrell so if you have Worrell and you're going to bench boost this game week, you want to get rid of him. For Fana, if you've got him because he's marked as injured, he could be a luxury transfer, but only if you're bench boosting. But equally, it's absolutely fine to keep hold of Fafana. So he's like, mm, maybe to get rid of, but definitely get rid of Worrell. And if you've got Worrell and Ward, that's already two transfers. If you can get rid of those without having to sell somebody else for the money, and I wouldn't do further transfers. But if you need to get rid of Worrell and Ward and somebody else to fund the players you're getting in, although that's going to be a hit of minus eight, if you're bench boosting, I think it's worth doing. So if you're offloading one or both of those, the best option would be a Stupinian, but be aware he doesn't play game week 32. Otherwise get a guard from West Ham for 4.8. Midfielders, you will have two or three of these. None of these are an issue, as in you need to get rid of them. But be aware, Fernandez blanks in 32. Rashford's marked as injured. 75% chance of playing, and he blanks in game week 32. The second set of midfielders, you have two or three of these. Again, I won't bother reading them all out. And if you're going to be changing any of your... You don't need to change any of these, but if you decide to, just for fun... Just be aware, the three Brighton midfielders blank in game week 32. Regarding the forwards, we have no major issues, but Johnson is only 75%, so you may want to mess about and get rid of him. So, so far we've looked at if you have Ward or Worrell and you're bench boosting, and I suggest you probably should do, then you need to move those two on. But if you want to just freshen up your team a bit or there's other players you're nervous about, then these are other players I'm going to show you now who are in our system and I think are definitely worth considering. But before you do, just remember, Brighton, Chelsea, Man City, Man United, they're not playing in game week 32, so don't have more than seven from those four teams in total. So sure, he's could keep some clean sheets. Man United has some very nice games coming up. Chilwell, Fernandez, Madison, March, Matoma, McAllister, any of those Brighton midfielders and Isaac they're all worth bringing in they're all popular for bringing in but be aware that Shaw blanks in game week 32 as does Chilwell as does Fernandez as does the Brighton midfielders and Madison the trouble with Madison Madison's brilliant he's a little bit prone to injury it seems and Leicester are awful this season at the moment and I think they've got a reasonable chance of getting relegated now relegated sides often do have one or more players that score well but I would be slightly nervous of Madison, but he's very good this game week. And if you want to get him 
and play him for several weeks, that's fine. He may do very well. Isaac's done well recently and he's a cheap striker. So if you're needing to release money, Isaac might be somebody you're looking to go for. Regarding the captaincy, I'm going to show you some players now. Approximately in the order that I'd probably favour them. But any of these are fine for captain and then any of them for vice captain. So Rashford, if he's 100% fit and not flagged, I'm probably going to put my captain's hat on him, the old mule hat. You might want to put the mule hat on him too. If he's not 100% fit, then Fernandez is a very good option to be wearing the old mule hat. Other options that are perfectly fine. Any of the Brighton midfielders would be fine. Madison is also a good shout. You might fancy him. Now, if you have none of those players or you don't particularly fancy who they've got or you want somebody else, then any other double game week player who's a midfielder or forward, that would be next in line for the captain or the vice captain. After that, any other double game week player who's a defender or a goalkeeper, you can put the old mule hat and vice mule hat on them. Now the bench, if you're bench boosting, the bench order doesn't matter because they're all going to play anyway and hopefully we're all going to be bench boosting this week. But just in case you're not, I think what you should consider from right to left, as you see it on your screen, so position three to position one, prioritize them as follows. Start on the right with your cheapest single week player going out, and then your cheapest double week player in going out. Now, this may mean that you're benching Kane or Haaland, which would be very, very unfortunate. But the trouble is, they've only got one game. You could be benching Saka or an Arsenal player, but they've only got one game. And any of the double game week players could do realistically much better than them because they've got two chances to get the points they've got two chances to get the bonus points but like i said hopefully you still have your bench boost and hopefully you'll play it this week and then the bench boost is out of the way hopefully that made sense i'm sorry it was a little bit long but i couldn't compress it any more than that and i went all around the houses trying to think can we do a bench boost the other week how do i give the split advice but we're going for top five percent and I think bench boosting, either the, even though we won't get monster scores, we may get 80, 90, 100, 110 this week with a bench boost. We should still be right to finish in the top 5% globally. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope this made sense and you have fun. Thanks. Bye. <music>